Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse's most interesting and cryptic character was Spider-Punk, aka Hobie Brown, a Spider-Man who speaks in, you could say, code. Or if you're in the UK, you would just say he talks like your, I guess your cool cousin talks when the family's fighting on Boxing Day. I, I don't know, you guys celebrate weird stuff over there. But for the rest of us, I think we can forgive ourselves if we missed some of what he was saying when we watched this. But hey, now that the movie's on digital 4K and we can really take our time and decode all this cockney wordplay, the more you look into the character of Hobie, his design, everything he says and does, the more you realize this guy's actually telling us everything we really need to know, why to distress the spider society, and everything that he's been through before the events of this movie, and why we think he'll be the ultimate hero of Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. As Hobie says, I was just cool the whole time. And by the way, sag has informed us that entertainment journalists like new rock stars are allowed to continue covering movies this way, but we join the unions and calling to the studios and streamers to make a fair deal with the screenwriters and professional working actors. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes launching your own website a breeze. Okay, Hobie Brown, Spider-Punk from Earth-138, and that was confirmed by Miguel's wrist device in the opening sequence if you look closely. He is voiced by Daniel Kaluuya, who's originally from Camden Town in London, one of the birthplaces of punk music. In an interview with The Voice newspaper, Kaluuya said that co-director Kent Powers told him the character should be real and accurate to the black British identity and punk way of speaking. He said, Daniel, bring that, do that, whatever's real. I was like, you sure? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that, that, some words you may not understand like that. But he's like, no, just, we'll make. But it shows that their obsession with authenticity. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice throughout the film, Hobie speaks quickly and that plus the accent plus the slang make him for anyone outside the British Isles kind of hard to understand, which is what Kaluuya planned for the character. Because at certain points during the movie, they do add context on screen. And what's that? I ain't got Scooby-Doo, mate, because that's what they want. The words Scooby-Doo, Cockney rhyming slang for clue. Cockney rhyming slang works by taking a word and rhyming it with some other word or series of words to get your meaning across. Like I ain't got a Scooby-Doo means I don't have a clue. A common British phrase is apples and pears when you mean stairs, as in I saw her walk down the apples and pears. If a plane is flying overhead, you might hear a Londoner say, there's a Tarzan and Jane, because Jane rhymes with plane. Sometimes people won't even use the word they're rhyming with, and you just kind of have to know from context what they were going to say and figure out what rhymes with that. This is often the case with the famous names. So if you're going to say someone's having an Arthur J, you need to know first off that that's a reference to Arthur J Rank, the famous 1940s British industrialist. And next, you need to figure out what the rhyme is with Rank. So he was having an Arthur J goes to he was having an Arthur J Rank goes to he was having a wank, which is British slang for, you know. Oh, God. Is it confusing? Yes. Is it cool as hell? Also, yes, therein lies the cultural identity and yeah, a bit of at arm's distance snobbery that defines what we love about the Brits. Now to give a bit of historical context, Cockney rhyming slang emerged around the 1840s when the East Enders of London had to make a living through various means, some of them illegal, and needed a way to communicate with each other in a code so that the police wouldn't understand what they were actually saying. So it has always been an anti-establishment code speak and Hobie in this film uses it the same way to openly defy and contradict the Spider Society authority in their presence. Now, whereas Miguel O'Hara is presented in this film as being all about control and order, Hobie Brown is the opposite. He's pure chaos in the way that he fights, what he does, what he says. He is sowing disorder. But unlike Miguel, he actually is doing it for good. And stealing tech from the Spider Society's base of operations is something he's doing for Miles and for Gwen, so that Hobie can create an off-the-grid interdimensional travel watch and get to where he needs to go. While it seems at first that he was just stealing just for the hell of it, there is a deeper intention behind it, just like everything he says has a deeper layer of meaning. Like the other spider people we've seen, Hobie launches into an explanation of who he is and how he got there, although he starts off a bit differently because he doesn't fit in with the establishment or follow any of the rules. Hi, my name's Obi, Obi Brown. I was bitten by a... What did you like to know? Yeah, man. Now for the last three years, I've been the one and only... Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm gonna show you my secret identity. Come out of it. Actually, when he first arrives, he says, Is this the younger from 1610? Now, younger is pretty easy to understand, even if you're not from across the pond. In British slang, it just means anyone younger than you, and sometimes can be used to mean a younger sibling. Foreshadowing the brotherly protectiveness Hobie will feel toward Miles later on, causing him to help Miles on more than one occasion. He talks to him like a little brother. Having a website is like having a business card. If you run a business, you kind of need one, and that means you need Squarespace.
Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that provides you with everything you need to do whatever you need with your website. Squarespace has templates and designs for every category and use case. So even if you're making your very first website, using Squarespace makes it super easy to customize your look, update your content, and add features to fit your unique needs. If you're selling merch, Squarespace makes it easy to do that too. You can design your products, then save time and money by letting Squarespace handle production, inventory, and shipping. And if you're selling any other kind of physical goods, digital goods, or even a service, Squarespace makes it easy to build your storefront and grow your business. To check out for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash new rock stars to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And perhaps the coolest thing about the character, supervising animator Chelsea gordon Ratzleff tweeted that Hobie's body was animated in threes, but his guitar, vest, and outline were on different frame rates twos and fours. Collectively, this gives him an overall anarchic punk rock aesthetic. He is out of step with himself and out of step with the other spider people. Different parts of his body are rebelling against other parts of his body. Now, Hobie's speaking double entendres complicate things even further because they add more depth to everything he says. For example, She's staging unpermitted political action slash performing art pieces or having a laugh at the pub with Amanda. I hate the AM, I hate the PM, I hate labels. I'm not a hero because calling yourself a hero makes you a self apologize as a narcissistic autocrat. Yeah, having a laugh at the pub with Amanda means going to the bar with friends or his crew. And when he says he hates the AM and hates the PM, it's a wordplay meaning both the time of day and hating the PM, the prime minister. And as he says this, he drags his boot across an image of Kingpin, which might be a clue that in Earth 138, Kingpin was the prime minister of that universe. Now in the comics, Spider-Punk is an anti-fascist, anti-racist, anti-establishment. And at one point, he even led a revolution against a tyrannical US government led by President Osborne. So there's also a ton of nods to these character traits and it's dialogue if you listen closely. Y'all make a heck of a team. I don't believe in teams. Aren't you in a band? I don't believe in consistency. Kids an anarchist. Yeah, Taking a crap on the establishment, I salute you. Giving a movie a rewatch just laser focused on Hobie Brown makes you realize that everything with him is just layers upon layers, just like how the character was animated. But just like stealing the text seemed purposeless and erratic, his language is designed to be off-putting so that no one can really understand what he's saying until they think about it a bit later. So the characters who just brush him off don't appreciate what he's communicating to other people he's trying to connect with. He does not agree with what Miguel O'Hara and the Spider Society are doing, and he says a quiet part out loud, but no one gives a shit enough about him to actually hear him. Because with his chaotic look and his language, no one is paying too much attention to him. They just cannot process him. Again, like Daniel Kaluuya said, you might not understand him, but there's an authenticity to that. An authenticity that I think will pay off in the third film, when I believe he will come back to fight alongside Miles and the others to take down Miguel and the Spider Society. All right. Squashed. Just don't enlist till you know what war you're fighting. Hobie helps Gwen come to that same realization about the Spider Society not being on the up and up, and he even knew before she did how everything would go down. I don't know what it is you gotta do, but I, I think that this thing is supposed to help. The guy who left it was a real piece of work. Gwen takes out the watch, and in it is a signed note from Hobie that reads, in case it don't work out. So Gwen makes her choice. She's putting a band together, and she wants Hobie to be part of that band. This whole movie, she's been looking for a new band, and right here is a lead guitarist to complement her chaotic drumming in the final solo of the movie. I wanna close out with three more important lines from Hobie that we have to single out. You're not a joke, right gang? Absolutely, completely on the music. I don't believe in comedy. Just kidding. I love this because really the joke here is in the dry pause before I'm just kidding, which is hilarious because Hobie is really the first one at the top of that chain so no one can turn around and see his face and that face would be masked anyway. So it'd just be impossible for anyone to tell if he's being sarcastic or not, which is just so true for the Brits. They love their dry comedy. They all understand their dry comedy. The rest of the world is like, are you kidding or are you not? That's really the widest point of the gulf in our language barrier. Another important line. Guys, what's that? It's a metaphor for capitalism. I love this because the common hatred for British imperialism and Western capitalism is something that Hobie Brown and Pav have in common. These are the kind of buildings that Pav earlier pointed to when he said this is where the British stole all of our stuff. He's not referring to Hobie Brown, he's referring to the PM. And lastly, this moment. Where you? How many missions have you been on together? Oh, uh, not that A couple many. Couple dozen. The fact that Miguel had Earth 138 on his wrist, that Gwen had already had those green chucks at the start of the movie that she got from Hobie, tells us that there is a history with these characters. One where Gwen and Hobie caught Donald Glover Prowler together 
And Hobie is the authentic hero that Miguel is a pretender who has to use technology who doesn't have Spidey sense, Miguel can never understand, and Hobie Brown is gonna be the hero that Miles and Gwen can actually authentically follow in the footsteps of. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll head to the rub-a-dub for a pig's ear because I'm Adam and son. Yeah, it doesn't really work as well when I'm not actually saying in the accent. But I wanna thank Gina Ippolito for writing this analysis, researching the history behind Hobie's little word plays, and I also wanna thank Paul from Heavy Spoilers for his guidance on this whole video project. As our nerd movie analyzer across the pond, please subscribe to Heavy Spoilers, doing great stuff over there. Also, please subscribe to all the channels in the new Rockstars Network. You can follow me on all social platforms at EAVOS. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.